So radioactive decay involves the transformation of an atom from one element into another element. And generally, it, it involves a specific type of radiation being released by the nucleus of an atom. You'll see here there are three types of radioactive decay that are involved with this transformation. Uh, atoms can release alpha, beta, or gamma radiation. Alpha radiation, with using the symbol alpha, that's actually a Greek letter, an alpha particle is two protons and two neutrons, the same as the nucleus of a helium atom. Alpha particles are very massive. They have significant mass. A beta particle, symbolized with the Greek letter beta, is a high energy electron. Beta particles have very little mass. Remember that electrons are much less massive than protons or neutrons. So a beta particle is a high energy electron. Gamma particles actually have no mass, uh, symbolized by the Greek letter gamma, looks like a Y. Gamma, part gamma particles are actually high energy photons, similar to light but with much shorter wavelengths and much higher energy. Gamma radiation has no mass um, as opposed to beta and alpha. So these are three types of radioactive decay. Now we talk about the way that these radioactive particles interact with matter. <clears throat> Imagine that we have a substance that's not very dense. These are the atoms of the substance. And you can see that this, the, whatever this is, is not very dense. Now we can talk about the way that these radioactive particles interact with matter. Um, and that depends on their mass. Alpha particles are very massive. Again, um, two protons and two neutrons. So if, if the alpha particles are being released by an element that's radioactive, and get, that gives off alpha particles, Imagine these particles are traveling toward our not-so-dense substance. They will interact with these atoms very easily because they're large. And in fact, this substance that is not very dense may in fact absorb all of our alpha particles, or most of them. They get absorbed into the substance. Now the beta particles are smaller and have a lot of energy, so as they're moving, they may not be blocked by this not very dense substance. Beta particles do not interact with matter very readily. So here we go, ooh, here they come. One might get absorbed, the other will pass right through that substance. Now imagine we have gamma particles, we have waves of, of gamma. Um, most likely for this less dense substance, these gamma particles will go right through it. And here they go, they're passing by, they pass right by those atoms, and they pass through the substance. So all that to say, alpha particles interact with matter significantly, and even thin and not very dense matter will absorb alpha particles. Beta particles, because they're less massive and are high energy, pass through matter more easily than alpha uh, particles do. And then gamma particles penetrate matter very well. Uh, unless you have something very thick and very dense, gamma particles will not be absorbed. Here's another example. So let's return our particles here. Um, and let's bring in another substance. So now we have something that's a little more dense. This, whatever this object is, will definitely absorb alpha particles. They will not pass through this substance. Beta particles most likely will also be mostly blocked by whatever the substance is. And again, because it's more dense. So here they go. They're also going to be blocked. Now, for gamma particles, even though we have a more dense substance, the gamma particles, because they have no mass and don't interact with matter very much, they will likely still pass right through whatever that substance is they will not be blocked. Now, to block all three types of radiation, 
alpha, beta, and gamma, we need something very thick and very dense. So now I have um, a material that's very, very dense. Notice all the atoms here. So let's take a look. This very thick and very dense substance will definitely absorb alpha particles. They will not pass through. Our beta particles, smaller, less massive, will also interact with this matter because there's so much of it that eventually the beta particle will interact with an atom and be absorbed by it. So our think dense substance will absorb the beta. Gamma, this substance is thick enough that it may actually absorb the gamma radiation. So here we go, gamma passes through, but because we have enough matter and it's very thick and very dense, a lot of the gamma will finally be absorbed by this thick, dense substance. So all of that to give you a sense of how radioactive decay interacts with matter. Now, to put it another way, here's a diagram. Uh, alpha particles are absorbed, they interact with matter a lot, and even something that's thin will absorb them. Your skin is sufficient enough to absorb most alpha radiation, or a piece of paper, or a piece of clothing, things like that. Beta radiation typically passes through your flesh, or through thinner and less dense objects, but a piece of metal, like aluminum, would absorb most of our beta. Gamma would go through both your hand and the aluminum, and we need something denser and thicker, like lead, for instance. Something like lead can absorb gamma radiation. So again, just to compare, our alpha, beta, and gamma radiation.